Hi ceramic students, it's Mrs. New here. Today we have a new project and this project is probably one of the more complicated projects that we do in ceramics too. The teapot, yay for teapots. So excited for this one. This is such a fun project. So your teapot is gonna be about five inches or so, either tall or wide. Um, it will have a spout, it will have a lid and it will have a handle and it will be functional. So here are just a couple examples um, that I've done in the past and a couple examples of what kids have made for this project. So you can see there's different shapes, um, different sizes of handles, little doodads on the top, um, different kinds of spouts. So um, these three spouts that you see here are actually made on the wheel um, and then this uh, lid was made on the wheel or you can hand build your lid and there's different kinds of handles as well. So um, this one has a little flange on the lid. So I want you to think about what shape you want the body of your teapot to be, because that's the first step is making the body of the teapot. And we're gonna be making these with coils of clay. So today I'm gonna to show you how to get started on the body of your teapot. Now what's really nice about coils is you can do what's called a direction change. So for instance, I could go out one way and then start to come back in. Um, here's another example of that, right? Where it's kind of goes out on the side and then back in. So if you look at the profile of this, it has a nice shape to it. And then this one, um, same thing here. It goes out, 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 and then comes back in. So coils are the preferred uh, method for making the teapot. So I'm gonna go ahead and set these examples aside and I will show you how to start this project. So the way that it starts is with um, a slab and with coils. So when we're using coils in the studio, what I want you to do is first always check the damp box and see if there's some coils that you can utilize for this project before you make more. If you don't know how to use the extruder, please ask for some directions on that. Um, mainly you just need to make sure you're using pretty soft clay and that you put in a, a big enough piece to extrude. But what I first need to start with is what I call the cookie or the little slab on the bottom. So if I look at the bottom of one of my examples, you can see the bottom is not coils. And in fact, I can't see any of the coils of my teapot, but the bottom is going to be a slab. So I have hand rolled out this slab. And what I want you to do is cut out a circle. Um, let's also talk about the thickness of the slab. So really you don't need too big of a circle. Maybe this one, maybe this one. Um, I think I'll go ahead and use this one to start with. Oh, I think I'll go actually one smaller than that because um, even though this is small, my teapot's gonna come out and around, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and push this down. I have my banding wheel. I'm gonna push this down. I'm gonna give it a turn, okay? And that should do my little cookie. Now the thickness of this needs to be a little thicker than what you're used to for the slab roller, and I'll show you why. So if we look at a coil of clay, um, I want it to be the same thickness as a coil. So this is the um, extruded coil. So you can see that's about the right thickness. So if you're not sure, error on the side of too thick. It's better to have it too thick than too thin. And as you can see, you don't even need a big enough, you don't even need this big of a piece. You just need a tiny little cookie. All right, so now I do have my banding wheel and um, other tools that I have. I have these little circle cookie cutters. So I'm done with these. Um, hopefully you can see that I'm done with these. Um, I have my needle tool, I have my serrated rib and just a little cup of water. And of course I'm gonna need coils. So I have extruded out some nice um, soft coils to use today. So here are my coils. So I'll kind of bring them over here um, and lay them out. You wanna try to keep them as flat as you can. And I'm gonna start building. So I'm gonna slip and score this outside edge of the cookie and sort of the top, um, top of it, maybe the top quarter inch or so just to get it ready for that first coil. Now, with coils, a couple things you need to know. You need to build one coil at a time. So I'm gonna lay this coil on top of this slab, and you can see the banding wheel is pretty helpful for this project. And then I'm going to cut it where the snake bites its tail. I'm gonna go ahead and cut that. I actually cut through both coils so that I get a really good uh, connection there and it fits really tight. I'm gonna go ahead and slip and score just that one little spot where the snake bites its tail and then blend, okay? This first coil on the slab is crucial, okay? If this is like the base of your teapot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this coil and this slab and sort of pinch this together and start to blend this together, okay? 
Um, so I'm pushing that clay up from the slab or I can pull the clay down from the coil. Uh, one mistake I see kids make with coils is try to blend around. You're actually blending up and down your structure or your pot, your teapot or your vase or whatever you're making. But this first coil, the other thing I'm gonna do is blend it in from the inside. So again, I'm pulling the clay down from that coil and blending it into my cookie, my little slab, and making sure that uh, that looks nice and blended, okay? You need to build one coil at a time and you need to sort of slip and score as you are building. So there's one. The other thing I wanna do is I don't wanna put my seam in the same spot every time. That would create a weak spot in my coil vessel. So what I'm gonna do is actually stagger the seam. So that's where my seam was this time. So this time I'm gonna put the seam where the snake bites its tail over on this side. Again, I'm gonna overlap. I'm gonna cut through both the top and the bottom to get a nice connection. And then before I put this on there, I'm gonna backtrack a little bit and I'm gonna go ahead and slip and score. Quite, again, see how quickly the banding wheel works for me, it helps me out. I'm not gonna slip and score the coil just cause I feel like I don't really need to, um, but I'm gonna slip and score where the snake bites its tail and keep on building and staggering my seam, okay? Um, another thing to know with coils is you do need to kind of blend as you build. Okay, so I've got this second one on here. So now, same thing, I'm going to blend on the inside. I'm sort of supporting this coil here. I'm pulling some of this clay down to blend that into that first um, little, little uh, dish kind of shape that I had. And I'm going to do that all the way around. And then I'm gonna do the same thing to the outside. So every time you put a coil on there, you're gonna stop and take a minute and blend it. Again, back, in, back and forth, up and down, not side to side. If I go like this, it's not gonna do anything. So I pull that clay down or I pull that clay up, okay? Um, now, another thing to know is with your teapots, you can only build about half your teapot body in one class period. Then you need to put it back in a bag and you need to wait until the second class period to build the top half. Uh, for example, let's say I'm building out, out, out for my little teapot here. So what I want to do is lay my coils on the outside edge. If I was building more straight up and down, if I have a spot where I wanna go straight up and down, I could put them right on top. When I'm ready to curve it back in, I'm gonna lay that coil on the inside edge. So that's how you get the direction change. So for me on this one, I'm going out, out, out right now. So I'm gonna lay that coil on the outside edge. I'm gonna put one more on here before I show you kind of the next step. So again, I kind of measure this around, cut it, backtrack it a little bit, do your score and slip. Okay, I am dipping my serrated rib in some water. That's kind of creating that mud or that slip. It's just a little faster. And then putting that, you know, kind of on the outside edge and blending as I go, okay? So day one is you're, you're kind of building out, out, out. And then on the second day is when you might start come in and in. And you want the bottom part to set up and be more leather hard before you um, start to build the in and in. If you try to build it all in one day, what can happen is once you start coming in and in, it can, this bottom part isn't stiff enough and it can collapse on you and kind of do this mushrooming thing. I call it the mushroom because it kind of flops over on itself. So one day would be building your out, 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 your, your curve that's going to go out and putting those coils on that outside edge, okay? Then in a bag, maybe a little bit of wet paper towel, not too much, if it's a weekend or something, definitely, but if it's just one class period, you don't wanna go too crazy with the wet paper towel because you actually want it to set up a little bit. So you get the idea. I would blend, blend, blend this. So let me show you the next one, kind of one that I've worked on last class. So you can see it's much more blended. I've taken a wet sponge and I've gone around. Let me grab one of those so I can show you one of the small round sponges, okay? And I blended this all nicely on the outside and the inside. Now this is more set up. It's not like really hard, but it's a little bit more leather hard. So now I can decide if I wanna start coming in or maybe I wanna go straight for a few and then start coming in. 
Okay, so because this is leather hard, I really need to make sure I dig into this with my serrated rib and um, slip and score this, really cross hatch, dig in a little bit. And then I'm ready to keep building with my soft coils. So on this one, I'm just gonna do one that goes straight up and down. So I have, this is gonna be sort of the widest part of my teapot, sort of the teapot belly, if you will. Okay, cutting both sides. And I went ahead and slipped and scored that ahead of time. So I'm just gonna move forward with this. Um, the other thing is now that that bottom part of the little bowl is more leather hard, you do need to make sure that, you know, you spend the time to blend as you go and make sure when you wrap this today on the second day, you're going to put some wet paper towel down here because you don't want it to get too, too dry. Okay, so back and forth for your blending, you get the idea. All right. So now on my next coil, I could start to come in. All right, so I would lay that here and I would continue to build. But this time I'm gonna try to shape this and start to come in a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video. Um, on the second video, I'll show you what to do once you get your whole vessel built with the coils and some tips on using some rib tools to really smooth this out and make this symmetrical. One of the things that's tricky with coils is making it symmetrical, right? Making it even on all the way around and on both sides. So I will show you that in the next video um, and show you a couple ideas too for how to create your lid. There's kind of two ways for thinking about your lid um, as well. So we'll get into that one next, but start with your coils building the body of your teapot, all right? Let me know if you have questions. Thanks so much. Bye.